Strokes are one of the leading causes of death worldwide, but when I talk to my patients at the clinic about how to protect themselves from a stroke, they're often surprised by a significant yet overlooked risk factor that's really easy to fix, and they're even more intrigued when I tell them that it's to do with a mineral deficiency. So let me explain, and then I'll show you how to fix it. So strokes come in two forms. We've got ischemic strokes, which occur when blood flow to the brain is blocked. So this blockage is usually caused by plaque that's broken loose or a blood clot. So about 87% of strokes are ischemic. Then there are hemorrhagic strokes. So this is when a blood vessel in the brain, it bursts. And when this happened, blood leaks out. It causes the brain tissues to swell. And this increased pressure can damage the brain cells. So why do strokes happen? Well, when it comes to ischemic strokes, the key mechanism relates to atherosclerosis. So that's the buildup of plaque in the arteries. And this process is complex, but it's basically about the body trying to cope with chronic damage and inflammation in the walls of the arteries. So think of plaque a bit like a scab over a wound. So plaque can lead to an ischemic stroke when a piece of it breaks free. It can also do so when it ruptures, and that's what can lead to a blood clot. But with hemorrhagic strokes, sometimes it can be caused because the blood vessels in the brain, they haven't formed properly. But another key risk factor is high blood pressure. This elevated pressure puts needless stress on the blood vessels in the brain, and it inflames them. And as we saw, that's a key driver of buildup of plaque in the arteries. And high blood pressure is one of the most important controllable risk factors for strokes. So it's estimated that about 51% of all strokes are linked to high blood pressure. And the research numbers here are sobering. So for example, consider the Framingham study. It's a cohort study in Great Britain and it's been running for decades and it's data showed that people with high blood pressure had an incidence of strokes 5 to over 30 times higher than those with lower blood pressures. And in a meta-analysis including 61 trials of over 1 million people, it found that the risk of dying from a stroke, it doubled for every 20 point rise in blood pressure. And before I've shared those sobering statistics with my patients in the clinic, most of them aren't aware about how critical blood pressure is for stroke risk. But here's the good news, there's a simple fix to do with a mineral deficiency that can often make a significant difference when it comes to blood pressure. So what's the deficient nutrient? It's potassium, but that doesn't mean loading up on potassium pills. So I'll explain how to correct this deficiency shortly. The point here though, is that before going on to blood pressure medications, it's critical to get potassium right because you might not need medications. But how big of an impact can potassium really make? Well, one study looked at what happens when we lower potassium intake. So men with a normal blood pressure participated. They were divided into two groups. One got a normal amount of potassium per day and the other group had a very low intake. So blood pressure didn't change for the group with a normal potassium intake, but the group with a low intake saw their blood pressure rise significantly after only 9 days of the study. Other studies have investigated what happens when we increase potassium intake. So a meta-analysis, for example, that pulled together the results of 22 randomized controlled trials, and the researchers here discovered that increased potassium intake reduced systolic blood pressure by about 3.5 units on average. So systolic blood pressure is the higher number that you'll read on a blood pressure monitor. So have a look at what happens, though, when potassium intake reaches 3,500 to 4,700 milligrams. The reduction here in blood pressure is a whopping 7 units. So we do have strong evidence that potassium is related to blood pressure. Having too little has been shown to raise blood pressure, and having just the right amount can lower our blood pressure. But how does this translate to our stroke risks? Well, according to a large meta-analysis, reducing our blood pressure by about 10 points cuts the risks of having a stroke by 27%, and a massive study in China explored the link between potassium specifically. It evaluated the impact of salt substitutes on those who'd already had a stroke to see if it could reduce how often individuals had another stroke. So let me explain a bit more about the intervention here. So a salt substitute, it swaps out regular salt for an alternative formula. So standard salt, it's typically potassium chloride, but a salt substitute used in the study, it was 75% sodium chloride and 25% potassium chloride. So that modified formula, it does two things at once. It helps people to lower their sodium intake. So this is great because too much sodium in our diet raises our blood pressure, but it also boosts potassium intake. And as we've seen, potassium helps to lower blood pressure. So the effects here are synergistic. So after a follow-up period of about five years, here's what the researchers found. Those in the salt substitute group had a 14% lower incidence of recurrent strokes. And we're looking at hemorrhagic strokes specifically, which we went through earlier about how critical that particular type of stroke is for blood pressure. We could see that there was a striking 33% reduction in the salt substitute group. So a natural question at this point is this, how can I get 3,500 milligrams of potassium a day? Well, the best way is to focus on diet. So potassium-rich foods also happen to have lots of other nutrients, and prioritizing them in the diet have lots of other additional health benefits. So what are some examples of high-potassium foods? 
Leafy green vegetables like spinach are a great option. Fruits can also be a good source. Bananas, for example, have got about 450 milligrams of potassium. Nuts and seeds are also fantastic sources, and I include a small dose of potassium and microvitamin just to help me try and reach my optimal levels. But just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. And scientists have actually developed a diet designed to help lower blood pressure, and it's called the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, and it includes lots of potassium-rich foods. A meta-analysis looked at studies linking adherence to the DASH diet and stroke risk, and those who stuck closer to the diet had a 12% lower risk compared to those who didn't follow the DASH diet as well. And it was a linear relationship, so basically that just means that the more closely the diet was followed, the better the stroke outcomes were. And another natural question that comes up is this, what is a safe blood pressure when it comes to strokes? What target should I be aiming for? Well, two groundbreaking studies have completely changed our answer to this question. They show us that doctors got it wrong for years. So for decades we knew that high blood pressure was dangerous, but we didn't realize how dangerous it was at levels that appeared to be okay. So for a long time, doctors thought that having a systolic blood pressure of up to 140 was perfectly fine. You may have even heard your doctor say that as long as your blood pressure is below 140 on 90, you're in the clear. We used to think that yes, 120 on 80 is ideal, but 140 on 90, that's still okay, isn't it? Well, we now know that having a systolic blood pressure of near 140 is actually quite risky. It's not just okay, it's putting our lives in danger. And the reason that doctors thought that 140 is okay is that blood pressure, it tends to go up as we get older. So we figured that a little bit higher was normal. But new research shows that even that little bit of extra pressure can cause big problems. And the first wake-up call came from a study called the SPRINT study, which stands for Systolic Blood Pressure Intervention Trial. That study was massive, involving over 9,000 participants, so the findings here are pretty difficult to ignore. And the goal was to see if lowering blood pressure to below 120 would protect us against heart attacks, strokes, and other problems better than the old target of 140. So the people in the study, they were already at high risk of heart disease, but they didn't have diabetes or a history of a previous stroke. They were split into two groups, one aimed for a blood pressure of around 140, and the other group aimed for a blood pressure of around 120. But here's where it gets really interesting. The results were so clear cut that they had to stop the study early. So the study was supposed to last about four to six years, but after just 3.3 years, it was obvious that lowering blood pressure to below 120 made a massive difference. And there was a 27% lower risk of having a heart attack, stroke, or dying from those causes each year. And when it came to death rates alone, there was a 25% lower risk of dying in the group that aimed for the 120 target. But the story doesn't stop there. So recently, another study in China tested these findings on an even larger and more diverse group. So over 11,000 people were included in the study. And it did include those with diabetes and those who had already had a stroke. So think of this study as the sequel to the SPRINT study, but with an even bigger cast. And guess what? The results were just as powerful. Lowering systolic blood pressure to less than 120 reduced the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and death from cardiovascular causes by 12%. Plus, it cut the overall risk of death from any cause by 21% over the three and a half year study period. So the takeaway here is clear that the old normal of 140 is no longer good enough. Most of us should be aiming for a systolic blood pressure of about 120 to really protect our health. And aside from increasing potassium intake, new research has highlighted one specific exercise that's got an outsized impact to lower our blood pressure. So make sure to check out this next video here to find out what it is and how exactly you can do it at home.